All right. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Ronnie Bailey Steinitz. I'm an ecologist in the Department of Anthropology, and I'm interested in how primates make a living in environments with many competitors. A large component of my work involves looking at the amount and distribution of food in the environment and the amount of energy these monkeys consume. The dynamics between these two are a main theme in studies of primate ecology as abundance drives, as food abundance drives consumer foraging patterns, social behavior, and many other traits. But what happens when there's an obvious disconnect between these two? Imagine walking through a rainforest and all the trees around you are loaded with food, like this fig tree where a chimp is sitting and devouring fruit right above my tent. Now imagine at the same time spotting a smaller red-tailed monkey and observing what you know to be clear signs of starvation, sunken patches of skin, a bony back and tail. This is exactly what we saw in a population of red-tailed monkeys in Kibali National Park in Uganda. So with so much food in the forest, how are these animals starving? Well, we hypothesize that competition from large body chimps is shaping the foraging patterns of smaller consumers. Now, no primatologist has ever quantified the effect of uh, uh, competitors on energy gain in small primates, and that's what we said to do. What we found is that while a lot of food is available, it's not necessarily attainable. Both species are fruit eaters, but owing to their size and strength, chimps have a priority of access, and that means that they can pursue nutrient-rich foods uh, with little competition, while red tails are left to eat foods of lesser quality. So we use geo-referenced measures of the availability of preferred foods in the habitat as a proxy for chimp presence to estimate the displacement of red tails. We also, ensured, we also measured uh, important foods for red tails in their home ranges, and we sampled urine non-invasively and analyzed it for C-peptide, which is a biomarker of energy balance. We found that when preferred chimp foods were scarce in the red tail home ranges, they avoided the area and red tail energy balance followed the abundance of foods in their diets as seen in the top purple line. As chimp foods became more abundant, competition increased and red tail energy balance decreased seen in the bottom yellow line. As expected, the relationship between food availability and energy balance was moderated by competition from chimpanzees as we measured geospatially through their food. Now, we thought that food abundance in the entire habitat would drive the degree of competition. If food is abundant everywhere, chimps shouldn't fixate on any particular area. But interestingly, food availability in the broader habitat had no effect on energy gain in red tails. And this suggests that chimps pursue all high quality foods and displace red tails regularly, regardless of food abundance elsewhere in the habitat. So what does food tell us? Our study provides a new perspective on understanding how food availability shapes interactions between competing species, where general estimates for food abundance, while perhaps appropriate for large bodied species, do not represent the foods that are accessible for smaller bodied primates. So measuring food abundance at the micro and macro habitat is a novel approach in primatology, and, we, and it can help us identify areas of particular importance to primates and to inform policy for conservation of this highly uh, endangered order of species. Thank you. Thank you, Ronnie. Very nice talk.